Chapter 12 You can't tech old folk new tricks. Neve's Rules for Changelings I didn't sleep long, as it turned out, when the Assyrian lion chased the wild hunt out of the museum's airspace, it flew straight to the green lady. What was the good of her putting bands on people? The hunt wanted to know if the band didn't hold. Twice the hunt had chased me, and twice I'd gotten away scot-free, leaving without so much as a toe to nibble on and laughing at the lady as I went. Which is why I pulled which is why I pulled out the dreamless sleep of by old market woman husky voice in my ear. The green lady's here, she murmured. The creator has sent for you. I groaned. I'm asleep. Can't the Assyrian lion deal with her? The creator's waiting, the old market woman said. Severally. She poked my shoulder with her marble basket until I got up, and then she made me finger comb the leaves out of my hair and brush down the skirt of my spider silk dress. When I was done, the gold framed mirror by the door informed me that the dress looked a lot better than I did. The old market woman glared at the armoring. If the puka or the copy wakes, call a guard. Otherwise, not a peep out of you. Come on, Neef. We paused at a renaissance fountain, and I splashed my face in it. Hoping the cold water could clear my head, it would make me feel better. Not nearly good enough to face the green lady in fury. When we got to the great hall, I noticed right away that she'd grown about three times as tall as usual she was and very pointy about the teeth and nails i was glad to see the creator was there too with a good dozen of most powerful guards behind him the old market woman gave me a gentle shove for reward forward hail lady i croaked the lady said something that made my heart crackle and my toes tingle the creator made a clucking noise. Remember, lady, that you are a guest in my domain. You remember that you're harboring a fugitive from justice. My justice. The green lady pointed the, a green claw at me. You're busted, kid. I suppose you think you're pretty smart escaping the wild hunt and enlisting the puka and generally blowing off my geese. Well, you're not. You're not. You can't laugh at the genius and get away with it. So I decided to throw you out of New York. Her words hit me like freezing water. I gasped and the green lady smiled at me. Her smile was a wild hunter's smile. Wide and toothy and cruel. The genius of Central Park is bluffing, the creator said briskly. In my museum, on my territory, she can't raise a breeze without my consent which she doesn't have. The green lady turned to her smile on the creator, and then she began to change. First she grew taller, and then she grew thinner. Her arms and legs flowed into the body, and her head kind of collapsed and reshaped itself in the space of two breaths. She turned into a humongous green serpent with brown markings with like leaves all down her back and lady's narrow green eyes glaring at the snaky face. I tried to hide behind the old market woman, which was like a troll trying to hide behind a pisky. The creator made a tisk tisk noise and clapped hands. Nobody moved. Even the guards are scared of her, I thought. I heard the faint scraping of tarot cotty skirts and the minnown priestess glided glided purposely across the marble floor and a scarf snake clutched in each fit in each fist as an ancient priestess of a snake goddess she was certainly the right guard for the job but i would have felt better if she'd been more than six inches high you don't really want to fight us the priestess said 
her voice was a lot bigger than she was low and calm and firm the lady serpent flicked her forked scarlet tongue oh yes i do she hissed i want to strike and sear and sneeze that would be the most unwise of you the priestess said this is the curator's territory here he is stronger than you are the great serpent's mouth opened wider and i believe possibly two gracefully curving wait the minnows priestess tiny snakes hissed like radiators for a quivering moment i was sure there was going to be a battle then the serpent's fangs reached tracked her great head dipped and she began to sway slowly that's more like it the priestess said now if you shift into something more comfortable you can talk this over calmly with the creator what do you think in the answer the serpent gave a long shiver by the time the shiver reached her tail she was the lady again still a little large and toothy than usual but not nearly as scary as she had been i came out from the behind the old old market woman trying to look as if i never moved thank you said the creator really green lady i don't know what why you're so upset with me if i didn't know better i swear she was new kind of trickster in fact you should be proud of her she hardly acts like a mortal at all the lady pouted she's broken every rule in the book she has to be punished that's the way it works. Of course it is. But a genius as ancient and powerful as you can think of something more imaginative than simply feeding her to the hunt? The green lady tapped her teeth thoughtfully with one green nail. I'm guessing you're not the, you're not going to let me cut her off her hands or her ears or anything fun like that. Your guess is correct. No blood, no bones, no close encounters with not demons. I am a conservator, madam. I cannot accept physical damage of any kind. The lady started to swell again. You cannot accept? Well, I cannot accept some snotty-nosed mortal brat tramping through my park without my permission. I've got to make her suffer somehow, or it'll be all over town that the green lady of Central Park is going soft. The corridor said, hmm, like he thought she might have a point. I opened my mouth to object loudly. Don't you dare, the old market woman muttered. But I've already suffered plenty. Not everything is about you, Neve. You don't know what's the stake here. If another gene, let me see if I'm saying this, geniuses think. I am a genius myself. Okay. <clears throat> My bad. If another geniuses think the ladies getting weak, the genius wars would start all over again. They couldn't break the treaty. They wouldn't dare. You broke your geese. I was about to the point out that it wasn't the same thing at all when a new voice broke into my Debate, debate what if my lady had a magical magnificent mirror in the mirrored mermaid queen everybody turned around and there was the puka at the top of the grand staircase looking very sleek in green velvet coat and silver buckled shoes from the costume institute his black hair was pulled back neatly and his eyes glittering glittering yellow slit. What's he doing here? The old market muttered. I'll clip those emerald wings for them. You just see if I don't. The green lady glared at the puka. What do you know about magical, magnificent mirror of the mermaid queen? I know that 
It knows all and sees all. I know it would be very useful to the genius who owned it. The green lady frowned. It sure would. And old scarly tails as likely to give me her eye teeth for earrings. The puka centered down and the stair across the hall and took up a position between the green lady and the corridor. He spread his long hands as if gathering up everyone's attention. To be sure, my lady, which is why you'll be needing a ch champion to get it for you, a mortal hero of one sort or another, in return for a boon, of course. The lady looked thoughtful. I was confused. Compa champion? Mortal hero? The suit of 17th century parade armor raised a mild fist, mailed fist. I object. It boomed. Oh, it boomed. It is improper for a young female of tender years to go a quest questing. The green lady rolled her eyes. Sheesh. Get with the program, will ya? This is the 21st century, okay? She said to the puka. The kid brings me the ma magnificent mirror. She can stay in New York, but I won't let her back into the park. That's asking too much. Things was moving a little too fast. I never heard of the magical magnificent magnificent mirror of the mermaid queen or been to New York Harbor. Sure, I knew a lot of folklore and I knew actually done much with it except bargain with Kazna Puri, which wasn't in the same league as bargaining with the genius for major magical talesmen. What if I tried to steal it and got caught? And what good would it do to me to stay in New York between if I couldn't go home? Where was I supposed to live and I wait uh, where was I supposed to live if I couldn't live in the park? I looked from the lady to the puka to the corator who was nodding. Um excuse me, I said. I don't think. Be best tit butted her head into my ankle. Hard. Hush, mortal, the puka's still talking. Well then, said the puka, what if she brings you the ticket of Peter Pan as well? The green lady scratched among her dreadlocks. It's an idea. I've been wanting to see Peter Pan and the producer who hasn't been spoken to me since the hunt ate the vampire. Okay, the kid gets Wait, the kid gets me a seat for Peter Pan, a good one, and the art oh orchestra, which the original Tinker Bell. I'll open the path of the park to her. She can forget the pro protection thing. One measly ticket to Peter Pan's isn't worth the grief of the wild hut going to give me over this. This was this was getting worse and worse. Did the puka think he was helping me out? Just how I supposed to get this ticket? And say I did get it, then what? I might be able to visit Astris, but I'd be looking over my shoulder for the wild hunt at sunset. Third time pays for all, the po said the puka. What if we added the scales and the dragon of the Wall Street? The green lady's mouth dropped open. So did the curator's so did mine. Everybody in New York between has heard of the scales of the dragon of the wall. They're a pair of magic balances that turn paper into gold. You put paper in one side and the gold appears on the other. When you take the gold off, the paper disappears. Sometimes the gold disappears too. The dragon's scales are still densifyingly worth having. The dark, the, the dragon scales, the green lady ha wait, said the green lady happily. He'd hate that, wouldn't he? And with all that gold, maybe I could buy some of the, my old land back. Wow, yeah. 
The kid brings me the dragon scales. I'll restore my protection. No strings attached. The puka bowed. Thank you, lady. You'll not be regretting this night's work. I better not. The lady fixed him with a green glare. I already got one serious beef with you, Puka. You did your fairy godfather bits when you helped the kid escape the hunt. She's going to have to do this hero thing without you. What's more, you've banished from the park until she's done it. I want you to hang out here at the museum, behaving yourself until your heroic little goddaughter comes back with my treasures and bails you out. The puka put a hand over his heart and bowed low. I couldn't see his face, so I couldn't tell how he felt. Speaking for myself, I felt sick. The old market woman gave me a sharp nudge with her marble basket. Did you understand what lady said? Yeah. You accept the green lady's offer then. Wait, oh, so little, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You accept the green lady's offer then, said the curator asked me, his spectacles glittering severally. I spectaculous. Oh. I searched my brain for options, but I couldn't come up with any. It was the puka bargain or exile outside yeah i said weakly i guess the creators turned to the lady the creator turned to the lady let's get this clear the magical magnificent mirror of the mermaid queen a ticket for peter pan and he's and the scales of the dragon of the wall street in exchange for removing your decree of banishment and restoring the freedom of the park and your protection from the hunger of the hunt is that correct the lady nodded yep it's a pretty good deal too considering i thought it would be a terrible deal i was dead no doubt about it if the mermaid queen didn't drown me the dragon would eat me i wasn't sure the producer of the broadway would do Make me dance in red-hot tap shoes until my feet fell off. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Puka staring up into space. He looks extremely sarcastic. Sarcastic. Staying in the museum, I realized, was going to be hard on him, as the quest was going to be hard on me. Harder. Supernaturals had been teaching me about questing ever since I could remember. Nobody had ever taught the puka how to behave himself. I stood up as tall as I could and tried to look heroic. Okay, I said. When do I leave? 